Hey, you want to catch nice, healthy bass? You better have a good harvest strategy. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Greg Grimes. In the last 25 years, we've worked on thousands of clients' ponds. And one thing we figured out, you better know how many bass to take out and of what size. Let's talk about harvest strategy. So let's talk about uh, bass harvest when it comes to trophy bass management. So one thing you want to do is control the bass numbers, uh, especially early on in a program, or if you inherit a pond that's already bass crowded. So what I mean by that is there's too many numbers of bass to grow the way we want them to grow, specifically for trophy bass management. So um, you've got to become the predator. You've got to take some of those bass out if you want to sustain really good growth. What happens is you have different, uh, you have growth every year, and you have uh, a stacking. You have reproductive success every year without a predator controlling those. So it becomes dominant with too many numbers, so you gotta get those numbers down. One thing you wanted to find first is just the goals for the pond. Again, we're talking about trophy bass management. That's not for everybody. Maybe you wanna go to a pond and be able to go out and catch, you know, 20, 30 bass in a good outing. But that's usually gonna mean that you're not gonna be able to catch you know, a trophy bass. That's more of a, a realistic goal is to say, I'm not gonna catch 20 or 30, I'm gonna go out and catch five or 10, but they're gonna really be bigger. So realize your goals first, and then try to achieve those. So again, talking about growing the bass, you wanna keep your numbers down. When it comes to the numbers to harvest, you might wanna get abolishments involved. There's a lot of different factors in how many pounds need to come out, but generally, if the pond is in balance, it hasn't already gotten bass crowded, and then 20 pounds of bass per acre is a good way to go. What we see commonly is that the pond does become bass crowded. At that point, doing a more traditional 20 pounds to the acre is not gonna cut it. You really have to go 40, 50 pounds of bass to the acre to take out. It can become work to some people. To me, it just means you need, you got more excuses to go out and go fishing. So go out and enjoy yourself. What bass should you harvest is always the next question. You wanna harvest the bass that is stunted. Really, ideally, you wanna get them before they're stunted, but you will see the dominant bass you're catching is the ones that need to come out. Those fish are usually skinnier. They don't have what we call shoulders. They're longer, more fusiform. They're not gonna be growing girth-wise the way some other ones might be. So the best way to determine that is a relative weight index. What that is, is a, is a standard that was developed based on the length weight relationship. So you wanna start off, you get a really, an accurate length on the bass, get an accurate weight on the bass. Go look at a chart, and what is this bass weigh for this length of the fish? One that I remember is a 12 and a half inch bass should weigh one pound. So that's a good example. If you weigh that 12 and a half inch bass and he's three quarters of a pound, you know, he's 12 ounces, that's a 75% relative weight. That's a pretty skinny fish. So we want to try to uh, have 100%, maybe 120% relative weight if we're talking trophy bass management. So we want to start utilizing that tool to harvest those fish. What we're looking for on a healthy fish, they have shoulders, they have girth all the way back to their tail. They're not in a fusiform shape. They're not long and skinny like a cigar. They're more shaped like a bluegill, if you will. That's a healthy fish. That's something that you want to have, and you'll get used to. It's something that over time, you're going to know the relative weight of those fish before you even look on the chart, because they're shorter, they're fatter, they're not long and skinnier. Then when we're talking about harvest, the other important thing is the other species in the pond. If you have catfish, or you have crappie, or if you're even farther north, you may have pike or muskie. Those are predators uh, that need to come out too. So if you've got channel catfish that are four or five pounds, they've got about the same mouth size as a 12 inch bass. You're gonna wanna take those out. Crappie are a predator, they have a hen's jaw. Take out the crappie too. On the flip side of that, what you don't wanna take out are the backbone of the forage base for the bass. You don't wanna take out bluegill. Even if a bluegill's really big, if it's say, you know, seven to nine inches, it's gonna take a really large bass to eat that. But he's gonna be spawning. He's gonna be making babies. He's gonna be the future food for the bass. So limit the harvest of bluegill, take out the bass based on relative weight, take out your catfish and crappie or any other predators, and you're maximizing the food and really emphasizing the best growth we can have on those bass.